Hi, welcome to this Accounts Receivable Bootcamp for Accounts Receivable staff working with SAP. Do you need to be productive in your new job or role? No time for a full course? This course is designed to get you and your team up and running in as little as 60 minutes. This course will be broken down into 11 video lessons and includes live SAP demos and a quick reference guide. So in 60 minutes, what will you learn? You'll learn how to enter and review different types of accounts receivable invoices in SAP, how to enter manual cash receipts, how to process electronic bank files. In this course, we'll specifically cover the US lockbox format in SAP. And then you'll learn basic reporting, how to review and audit invoices that have been posted. Let's look at some more details. So as an overview, what specific scenarios will you cover? So the first one will be how to enter non-sales order invoices, how to display them, change, and cancel and reverse these invoices. These will be manual invoices with no relationship to an original sales order. We will then learn how to take sales orders and produce billing for them, which will produce an accounts receivable invoice, display those documents, and again, change, cancel, and reverse if needed. We'll then take you through after entering the invoices how to manually post some cash, and how to clear open items for invoices, list posting and clearing accounts or for accounts receivable. Then in terms of electronic processing, we're gonna use the US lockbox format, which is the check format in the US, show you how to import a file, post and clear open items, and then take you to, on the reporting side, account balance and line item display, and then we will also look at accounts receivable age analysis. So those are some more specific scenarios you'll cover during this bootcamp. Just as an overview note for this course, the bank file processing, we will show basic scenarios here only in this course, and we will specifically cover the US lockbox file processing as an overview. The reason for this is that electronic files and the instructions with your bank will vary from country to country, different payment methods, and different technology available in your company and with your banking partner. So in this course, we'll illustrate the concepts as an overview for the bootcamp, but you will need to then investigate your own company's policies and procedures. For instance, if you have a specific electronic bank statement for a different country, you will need to then find out what those details are specifically internally, but the principles in this course will still apply. So with that, let's get on with the course. Right, so for this first lesson, we're going to cover entering a manual invoice or what I'm calling a non-sales order AR invoice. So the transaction code here is FB70, and this is to create these invoices standalone, no reference to any logistics or sales order document. So the scenario here is you've got a manual invoice to enter for domestic product revenue, no link to sales order. That's the, the main clue here. So for the master data, we're going to use this uh, same customer, which is just a domestic US customer for the name, Company code 1710, a US company. The document type will default to DR, which is the standard SAP for a manual custom invoice. We're gonna use this um, four series revenue domestic product GL account for the PNL side for the revenue. And the tax code we're gonna pick is tax exempt and the tax jurisdiction code, just a dummy one year for California and with a profit center for product A. So let's jump into the demo. So for the uh, FB70 uh, transaction, it's going to be found under accounts receivables under the uh, accounting module side. If we go to financial accounting, you'll find accounts receivable in there, and that's the menu we're going to be working with. And then under document entry, you'll see the FB70 uh, invoice entry transaction. So that's where we're going to head. So when you open up this uh, transaction code, it defaults to customer because it's an invoice, and you do have an option to go invoice or credit memo, but we're going to stick on invoice. And here we're going to enter our customer number and enter the invoice date. And this invoice date ultimately also drives the baseline date for payment terms. But remember, the invoice date is different to the posting date. So um, just to make sure that was clear, and here's your document type, the customer invoice with that DR. And here we'll enter the, uh, the reference number from the customer. We'll put in some manual texture, but this would normally be a specific reference number to the invoice. And... Um, once the dates are good, we can check our currency. We've got US dollar in this case. Here we've got our tax code, which is our tax exempt. And generally when the header information is complete, I like to click this uh, calculate tax button to see um, everything's looking okay. And company code 1710. 
Okay, so once we've clicked that button, the customer details come up so we can validate we've got the right customer, we've got the right bank details. So we're good to go before entering more details about the invoice. So here we'll go ahead and enter the um, amount for the um, customer invoice and here we can enter some uh, manual text just to record the invoice. This is essentially the, all the header information for that customer account, the 171 series account. So for the GL account, we need a PL account. We'll use this PL account revenue, and let's enter just a balancing amount to balance that entry. And once we've entered that, put our tax code and the tax jurisdiction code. And what will happen is once we've entered that uh, jurisdiction code and we press enter, you'll see the system is going to say that we need an assignment to a CO object. Because this is revenue, there's no cost center involved. But what we will need to do is this is a PL account. It does need an account assignment object. So the easiest way is just to really double click on this line item. You can scroll around here to find the profit center, which is what we're looking for. But in this case, just double click and we can enter a profit center or profitability segment, which is the normal account assignment for revenue. So when we're in here, uh, we're going to click on this profitability segment button. And in this case here, this gives us quick access to be able to enter a profit center, which is a real account assignment object for revenue. So we're going to scroll down here on profit center and put in a profit center number. And what I want to really show you is although we've only entered profit center and we click continue over here, the system is deriving additional COPA data. You'll see this little uh, green check mark here means that the uh, profitability segment has been derived. And if we scroll down now, you'll see that not only do we have our profit center product A, but if we scroll up here, we'll see that we've also got the, um, the corresponding uh, segment and functional area derived from SAP. And these you get for free as part of the, uh, the derivation from your configuration. Okay, so now we've got the account assignment in. We can go back. We've now um, got a balanced entry. We've got green, so our balance is zero, which is great. So debits equal credits. And um, we can simulate this posting. But another thing to just point out is the payment tab here. This is the baseline date that the payment terms are calculated on. So the payment terms here were triple zero four, and you'll see that payment term specifically refers to that the baseline data is the end of the month. So this is why you'll see that the baseline date at seven thirty one is the end of the month, which is not the same as the invoice date which we had, uh, you know, mid month over here on seven sixteen. You'll just see that difference there. So the baseline date is dependent on the payment terms, and that's something that you might need to change on individual invoices. So let's simulate that posting. There's an overview. We've got a DR customer invoice, company code 1710. Uh, we've got our customer AR. We've got our credit to revenue. Our profit center is in there. So we're good to go. So now we can simply post that. And then SAP will come back with a document. Document number has been posted to the company code. So that's it. You've just created your first manual invoice. And now we can just go back to the main menu and that's the end, so pretty straightforward on that one. So that's the uh, end of the first lesson. So for this lesson, we're going to look at that same AR manual invoice, and this time we're going to look at display and change transactions. So the business scenario here is that you may want to change the text that's in an invoice for reference purposes, or you might have to change the payment terms of a manual invoice if they were incorrect are some examples. So what we're going to do here is we're going to post a fresh uh, posting at the start of the lesson and work with that document for display and change. So let's uh, jump into that. So under accounts receivable, we're going to um, the display and change transactions under the document menu here. You'll see the display and change FP03 and FP02. But we're first going to enter a new document here, the FB70, so we have a fresh document uh, to work with for our display and change. So entering the invoice again, um, remember using FB70, this is a manual invoice. We need to enter our customer number, our invoice dates, some reference information, enter the amount of the invoice, and we're going to enter that in um, US dollars. and. I like to use this calculate tax button as mentioned before because you can view the customer name and address and bank account details before actually entering the amounts and the rest of the invoice data. So we're just going to carry on and enter the, um, the text for this invoice. And um, now we've got the amount in the top for the header. Let's do line items. So how we enter our revenue PL account, um, which is a credit for revenue, enter balancing amount, a dummy uh, tax jurisdiction code. And 
Um, we are using our tax code 00, and when we press enter, it says we need assignment to a CO object. As this is a PL account, we do need to get a, um, a CO assignment. Double clicking on the line item and the profitability segment button is the easiest way. We're just going to scroll down here and put in a profit center. Again, this is just a repeat of the first lesson create manual invoice so we have a fresh document for display and change. So now that we've entered that document, we can just go back and then we can. Uh, Save and post this document. Balanced entry is green, so we can go ahead and uh, post this document. And we'll get a document number at the bottom. Document um, has been saved. So the quickest way to do this is now to just click on document and then click on change or display. So let's quickly go to display first. So this is now the FB03. When we display a document, we can see that we have our, our customer and our um, revenue line item with the amounts. And if we look at the document header here, then we can easily see the uh, document type used, which was a DR customer invoice. We can see the user ID, the date it was entered. So good audit information here, and it was an FP70 manual invoice and the date and time. So document header is a good way to audit the information on the document. And now if we um, double click on the customer line item side, you can see all these fields are grayed out. They cannot be changed. If you click in change mode over here, this is a shortcut to FB02. You'll notice the amount and tax and the document header is still gray, but you can change things like the payment terms or text. So here's an example and those fields are in white. I'm just going to update the text here. So this is an example of what you could change. I'm just going to put there product A. One thing you can find useful to change are the payment terms if you need to. So here we had the, the payment terms, which were um, baseline date, end of month. So we change that, for instance, to a cat one with some cash discount with the mid-month. And we choose that payment term. You'll see that the baseline date automatically updates. And now we have the discount percentage and the days in there. And then it says you have terms of payments have changed. It's a warning. You need to enter through that because you're confirming that you're changing something in the document. And then you can simply save. So this is an example of the types of things you can change. And it says your changes have been saved on an invoice. And then you can go back to the main menu. So remember that although we jumped from the creation screen, the display and change transactions can be used individually, but it's easier to get there just directly uh, from the document display. OK, so that's invoice display and change. So the last step or action you would want to take is to reverse a document potentially. So FB08 is to reverse an AR invoice. The scenario is here, you have to, the invoice is posted in error or there was a mistake and you want to reverse it. We're going to use the document that was posted in the previous lesson. And remember, SAP won't actually delete the invoice to preserve the audit trail. A new contra document is posted and it nets out the original. It doesn't actually delete it. So for reversal, again, you go to the uh, document screen here. And under here, you'll notice there's a reverse folder. And we have an option here called FB08 individual reversal. So double click on that, enter your document number that we just created in the previous lesson and company code and fiscal year. And here you enter a reversal reason. And here we just have some dummy reasons. We just put here wrong document posted, which is fine. And once you've got the document, you can simply post it or you can click display before reversal to make sure you've got the right document. So by clicking display, we can see here we have the document. We have a credit to revenue. We don't like that. We can come back out and simply click post. When we click post reversal, a new document number is posted. You'll see it's got a different uh, number range in the 16 series. And if we now jump back, <clears throat> and then we then go and click display. And here we actually display that um, <clears throat> document. You'll see that um, I'm just gonna enter the fiscal year here and click enter. This is the actual document that got um, reversed and here you can see you've got the contra entry for this document. And what you'll notice here is when you have a, an entry, if you click on this reverse document button, it'll automatically jump you to the linked document. And then you can see the link between the documents. So here we have the credit to revenue, click the reverse document and here is the debit to revenue or the contra. So the system does neatly um, hook the two documents together and if you click on the document header, you'll also see that the reversal document is also noted in the header and with a different uh, document um, 
uh, number there. So here you can easily see the document number and who it was reversed by. So there's a good clear order trail when you reverse a document. So it's a pretty simple process to do a reversal. And now we can just go back to the main menu and that concludes that lesson.